You all right? Yeah, good. You? Very well, thank you. Um, Sasse was an outstanding win. Um, other than the results, what, what, what pleased you most um, about Sasse? Obviously, the bonus point win and, and, and not allowing Leicester to get anything from the game, but from the performance wise, what, what pleased you most? Um, the composure at half time. Um, it's quite easy, isn't it, at Welford Road to think the sky has fallen down. 16, 12 down at half time when you haven't had much of the run of the game. Um, but how they how they were when I spoke to them and I was asking by the field first and foremost was was one of we've got this if we execute the game plan. They they were they were very confident in terms of the physical abilities and what they were feeling out in the park, not to panic. So yeah, that that's that's the biggest improvement I would, I would say that these, this group have made um, in terms of distance travelled from, from the team that we were last season. In, in, six, in, all, in six of the games that you played this season across the Premier, the Premier Rugby Cup, I think I'm right in saying only one, which is the game away at Bath, um, scoring more points in the second half, sorry, scoring more points in the first half than the second half. So what, what do you read into that? Do you think the side is a little bit slow to get going and improves as the game goes along or do you see that as actually when you're not on top you're managing to keep the opposition at arm's length you're staying within touch and then once the period of dominance comes for you guys then it, 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 you're taking advantage of those periods uh, I think it's a, it's a good sign of resilience um, you kind of got to look at the, the team that we have and, and some and the, I guess not our, our style of play but how physical attrition wears teams down as well and we are a very physical team there's only so long you can you can you can put your thumb in the dam isn't there when, when people like the Duprees players like the Duprees run and, and continue to run at you so I think I think it's a bit, a bit of everything, really. It's game style. It's, it's a bit of resilience. There's a, there's a growing belief um, that, that the, they've got the minerals and, and the stamina and the, uh, and the nous to come through in those second halves. I mean, like that's been since Christmas. It's something we addressed strongly last Christmas because um, we weren't winning the second halves to the first half of last season and then we won the majority of them after Christmas and now that's a trait that's followed suit um, so yeah I haven't really put my finger on, on why but you know it, it's the best teams have an ability not that we are the best team we're not nowhere near but you know we aspire to be <laughs> one of the best and part of the skill set of the armour you need is to be able to break teams down to break them over the course of the game um, and that's done through you know a multitude of ways Rafi Quirk was but it's simply sensational when he came on probably accounted for effectively 21 points in, in, in sales favour try try assist and a try saving tackle and um, considering he's been out for six months his first game since early April did you think even though he is a sensational young player you thought he would be that good on his first game for six months no I don't think anyone did I don't think he did I just I had a quiet word to him you know before half time just before half time I'm like don't force it do the basics well if there's quick ball then it'll open up for you that was basically it just do the basics well and there was nothing basic about what he did was there like he was exceptional in every area both sides of the ball um, so yeah I think he surprised himself in terms of his performance in terms of selection there was no Ben Curry or Dan Dupree on Saturday were they being rested or were they carrying knocks I know you mentioned about Ben Curry went off against Exeter, but should have trained a week ago. Was it being rested or were they carrying injuries? I think if look, if it was a cup final, 
And as, as I said last week in the press interview, it wasn't a cup final. It's just another Saturday. But if it was a cup final, they would have played. With the understanding that we've got another nine months of season, you know, another 20 odd games or whatever it is, going into 30 if we get through to finals. There's a duty of care to look after these lads over the stretch to make sure that we're still firing at the end. And they were carrying uh, small niggles. So with the strength and depth that we've got in that area, uh, with, with both Curries and both Duprees and John Ross and uh, Sam Dudale's playing really well, um, we thought it, it's best to to play those who are fit, fully fit, 100% fit and and, uh, and have trained all week. Are they fit for Friday? They're up for selection, yeah. Just one by one from me, the club tweeting earlier, some sign news coming later this week, you're probably not going <laughs> to reveal it now because then that defeats the object of an announcement, but is it new signing for next season? Is it contract renewal? Is it... Short, an immediate impact short-term signing well whatever I say you're going to be able to read between the lines I've been told to straight back this one back Kieran so you're going to have to guess contract renewal well, like I say you're going to have to guess mate I normally give you everything don't I but this is the one stipulation when I went upstairs they're like don't mention a word Radio Sanderson like which I am aren't I so I'm not this is the one time I'm going to behave myself is it going to be Wednesday or Thursday? You can probably say that. I think I think it's tomorrow they're releasing the news. Okay, thanks, Alex. Cheers, thanks, Kieran. And what news is that? It's, it's good news. <laughs> it's positive, it's encouraging, it's good news. It's a big statement. Good, good, good. Can you just talk about Johnny Hill? Uh, when Ludwig went, you, know, you lost one of the great line-out forwards in the world. Johnny's obviously done it for England, but... What has that added to you as well in, in other areas? Has he surprised you in terms of the rounded skill set he's got? And obviously it was fantastic at middle of the modelers, but is he even better a player than you, you thought you were getting? Uh, I think we haven't seen the best of him. Um, and, that, and that's saying something because he's playing really well. You know, we've got two or three line-up steals of the day and he's, he's everywhere like a splat around the park, isn't he? Very, very athletic. Uh, but I, even by his own admission, I think there's more in him still. Certainly a better bloke. <laughs> uh, you never truly know someone, do you, till you, till you get in the trenches with him. And he's a guy that I would I would go in the trench with every time. Like, love him, love him, love him what he's about. Uh, and, and he's got like a quiet way about him. But he, yeah, in terms of his skill acumen, there is definitely more to come from Johnny Hill and that's saying something as I say his mobility around the park is excellent his, his athleticism and movement in the line out last, as you saw last week second to none and there were big moments you know there was a couple in the, one in the 22 certainly um, physically I think in defence is where we can probably make some of the biggest strides with him I think he can start banging people because he wants to so and, and Tom Curry I mean, please, the way he's, he's, he's picking up the game, isn't he? He's really getting to become Tom again, isn't he, after this break? This is the best he's played for us whilst I've been here, Tom. He affects the game in every facet. <laughs> Kick chase, scoring tries and making breaks and, you know, winning turnovers. He, he's, he's, he's been absolutely outstanding. And, and I think that is a direct re result of how he came back in the pre-season. He was, he was a quite a different character to, to what I've witnessed. Um, yeah, I think he's got a handle on himself better in, in how he can sustain his level of physical and mental preparation because the amount he, he does, he, like, he totally ends himself. So that, that's really difficult physically to be able to do it, but also to get it to that level of, of application mentally. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how he does it. I know we help, help him with it, but he's... He's a man alone in that in that sense. He's topped the tackle how, count. Sorry, how, two weeks. Have you given him certain triggers and things to think about, it, or has he worked it out himself just by the natural progression of his of his career? Because you know, patently, the way he plays and the way his brother plays, they kind of want thrashing themselves like this every season. You have to be a little a little bit more understanding of your body and uh, and what this game can do to you. We've worked out a playing and rest. Um, plan for him that takes him right through to the second week in January 
Uh, and I won't divulge it because it'll be obvious which games he's missing out, but he, he won't play more than four games on, on the bounce, which gives him that uh, kind of bright light at the end of the tunnel where he can see a week where he can recover and boost and refresh. Um, and, I, and I guess it opens himself up to, to be able to end himself, you know, like he does. Uh, so that's part of it. Um, I think in the past... He's, he's just he's just been put on a treadmill till he's broken. Um, so we've readdressed that. He he he, he seeks um, mo not motivational, but doesn't like that. He seeks help like all the best players do from outside the club um, to to better himself in terms of his mental resilience. That's on him. We offered him help with that. He didn't need that. Um, and wherever we can, we, we try to we try to deload him um, cognitively and, and physically when we when we can. He doesn't miss sessions, but we're just managing within the sessions so he doesn't burn himself out. So it's 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 quite a eclectic approach of which he's he has full autonomy, but um, we have decent input um, from our side on, on on what he feels works for him. Does he? Told himself a personal sports psychologist, and has he has he gone down that route? Because you have support, an awful lot of support within your your own system at Sharks. Yeah, yeah, we do. Uh, look, when it gets to that kind of cutting edge, we don't have anyone in house who can who can help lads with that. We have experts like Wayne Hoyle um, and, and Jamin Langley who works with the IDP. But the sports psychology, that's more the scalpel, and we provide that service. Um, but he's gone he's gone outside to to see someone because he wanted to be separate from the club which is which is progressive and, and hence why you know I probably shouldn't be really talking about it because that, that's his thing that he wants for himself because it, the perception is that the Tom will run through a brick wall and get up and the next big run through another one yeah he will has, has it just taken him a little bit of time to realise that you can do that, but you can also have a bit of a break in between hitting the brick wall. I'd have to ask him on that one, like whether it's his just time and experience alone that's realised it. Uh, look, at, yeah, it's even, even, even the break, even the um, yeah, there's, there's breaks and there's breaks, isn't there? Like, it, it, like getting motivated and, and it is is a skill. Let's talk about just the mental mental resilience, but being able to to download and to have proper proper time off is also a skill that you have to learn. He got off to Kenya this summer and really got away from it, so so maybe that was a period of reflection for him where he he's come back that bit fresher. Um, again, you'd have to ask him. One of the great strengths of Saracens and starting off by Brendan, and you know this better than me, was that players knew what they were going to be doing. Looking ahead, they knew when their games yeah. were off, they knew when their games were on. Mentally, they could prepare with it, they could prepare to be off. Is that a little bit of what Tom now has? He has that programme ahead, right, I've got this block, then I'm going to be off, then I've got my next block. And when yeah. you're saying, no, no, you won't have four, more than four on the bands, does that include England? Again, that'd be telling, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, of course it does. It has to take into his, his international um, responsibilities into account. Uh, you know, and I guess best case for him, best case international responsibilities. I meet with Eddie on Friday just to see if he agrees with his plan as well, because it has to be aligned. Um, and yes, it is planned out, but it's not rigidly planned out because there are many caveats to having a long-term kind of plan for someone of, injury and illness and all those other things that could have a factor mm. in having to amend and adjust it so we, we in discussion we said look this is a, a good plan but it's it can only ever be uh, a loose plan in principle and, and we'll take each week as it comes but in, in loose plan in principle is, is yeah that's mapped out for him until mid jam just, just finally so therefore the way he's playing, having started this plan, evidently to sell it to, to Eddie is on Friday will be much a, a much easier sell. The evidence is there, isn't it already? He, I'd like to think so. He's he's highly motivated, um, and at the moment, 
you know, like playing out of his skin. Let's just say, you know, and he made, I think he made 17 tackles or something at the weekend. Let's just say he made 25, which is well within Tom's capacity. You know, you might have to change that plan then. He might have to have a week off the week after if he's carrying a niggle or a knock or his back's not right or his head's not in it. So again, it's a, just we have to have a constant of reappraisal of that. Um, but certainty, some certainty around, particularly for someone of Tom's personality traits, who likes, who likes to have a plan, who likes to, to have things kind of set for him to get focused on. It, it, it's it's a positive one for him. He, he he enjoys the process of doing it, and yeah, and he and, and it's working for him at the moment. Excellent. Thanks, thanks, Alex. Cheers, Chris. Alex, how are you doing? How are you? I'm really good, thanks, Lee. You're all right. Yeah, you're giving us a tour of the club here every week now. You were in a different venue last week, and a different venue two two weeks prior to that venue. Was that? Next week. Well, we get we get put to the uh, the side rooms when the big dogs when BT are in. We get this is Sid Sutton's office, the CEO's office that we're in right now. So all the big plays and the high level shit gets carried out in here. <laughs> so I guess we're in a good spot for this kind of okay, conversation. Fair so this is this is where the contract you've been speaking about. We'll <laughs> good Liam. <laughs> so how you come back round? Really good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious, with that tweet that's been put up on your social media, the tagline on it is more than a rugby club. Can, can, can you give some meaning to that sort of a phrase? What, what does it mean to you? Well, it's a home. It's, uh, it's it, a rugby club with something that maybe you dip your toe in, I guess, or in professional terms, it's a place of work. It's, it's it is more than all of that. It's a it's a vocation. It's a home. It's a it's um. Has to be more. Has to be more than a club if you want to aspire to to good things to to leave legacies behind. It has to mean more to you. You got to go that little bit extra than what the, what other teams or clubs do. And uh, yeah, it's a bit. It's it, 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 we're building a bit of a family here. I feel that the lads feel that we're very tight at the moment, and long may that continue. I know it, it's easy for us to be that way with the results that we're getting. And therein lies the challenge for me, in, you know, in the middle of the season to be just as tight and uh, just as together as we are right now. Okay, good. And Nick Shoner came off the bench for you last weekend. Uh, he, he'd been he'd missed a couple of weeks prior to that, given, given the suspension on yeah. another red card. Look, you, you, you keep, you're a club that kind of has a habit of making things hard for yourself on the pitch with red cards, yellow cards. Yeah, I'm just wondering, you've had a couple of early on this season that What's the what's the feedback on on that? Is is that just part of the game, or is there something that needs to be worked on going forward, long term? If you are to deliver some silverware at the end of the season, yeah, no, we are working on it. We do work on it. it um, yellow cards have improved dramatically. I think we were like maybe eleventh or something for the number of the yellow cards received last season, compared to the most the season before that in the first six months of tenure. So you can see. Again, distance travelled. Now we've improved in that area. To answer, you know, your, your bit part of that question is that yes, there is an increase in number of yellow and red cards for for obvious reasons with regards to contact to head. So it's something you got to um, mitigate for in terms of your training methodology as well. Okay, like with, with say with the next showing of red card, I mean you, you're showing your ability to kind of like scramble, think on your feet, etc., to make up for this, that that short foot, aren't you? I mean it was a good, a great example of the togetherness that exists in your squad now. Yeah, look, the, the, the togetherness is one is one thing. The scrambling, it's the change of plan as well, uh, the change of the adaptation and flexibility within all the chaos that a, a, a bit of a black swan moment like that. Um, Causes is, is something that we've trained from week one in pre season. Uh, this, this thinking on your feet, how we can communicate, what's next, being able to shelve what's just happened uh, and come up with a new plan and being on the same page with the rest of the, what that is. We've, we, we've worked really hard on that. We've been to disaster training camp for three days down in Wiltshire, which I told you about back into the pre season. 
I spent some time with Sir Andrew Strauss, who, who adopted similar principles when he trained his his team to win the World Cup. When that's super over, you don't get any bigger black swan moment than that. Uh, and every Tuesday, we, we look to embrace chaos. We, we put them under it. We, we make them fail, like every Tuesday, uh, and understand the calculated risks within that failure on the back of that, which we will do on Thursday. So it's part of our process on a weekly basis and throughout the pre-season to be able to deal with these these moments of adversity and come out the other side just as tight, just as together. It's not by fluke. OK, that's very interesting. Just quickly changing tack. London Irish, you say last year, two, two high-score entertaining draws. Yeah. I, 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 who knows, there's been no draws yet in the Premiership this season. But are, are you a fan of draws? Is, or, or does something need to change? Do we need to Americanize this and get a, get a golden point in our game or something like that? Or are you happy that those points could have made all the difference at, at the end of last season if you guys the playoffs? Yeah, yeah, probably as well for them as well. I don't know how far they were off, but it could have, it, yeah, those those leads which we had, which we gave up in that last quarter against Irish, um, could have cost us, but so could Worcester away the COVID match against Newcastle that we missed out on, um, which, which we were ill on. We had we had quite a few banana skins last year. Uh, it just so happened that those two those two games ended in draws. I'm not a fan of them. Not when we've got a lead like we had Liam, um, but I think it, I think it's an element to the game that that should be left in. You can, you, you know, I think it's to, to to snatch a draw and to get three points as you can, can't you, with a four point bonus, a try bonus win is is not a bad effort away from home for some clubs who, who, who endeavour to to claw back a victory from the jaws of defeat. No, I think it's a good thing still. Okay, fair enough. Just finally for me then, look at the, the, the rugby on the field, it's been spectacular this season, it's been a joy to watch, etc. Look, at, there's a lot of trouble off the field and you would have your own link with that, given given Steve would, would have been at the Sharks but before he moved on and gone to Worcester. I mean, what, what do you make of it all? It, it seems to be never-ending bad news off the field with regards to certainly a couple of clubs. What, what's, what's your own feeling on it there at Sale? Given we could have possibly with the, with the other team gone from the league next next week, never mind the next season, you know, it, it, just, it doesn't reflect well on the on the tournament as a whole, does it? It doesn't reflect well at all on how the finances of the game have been managed. Lucy Ray did an article in, I think it was like London AM or something, which was was which was really smart and concise, and she doesn't give many interviews so what she talked about the feasibility of the game and every club needing to have multiple revenue streams to be able to support at least the professional side of the support that the sport is being necessary you know n not overspending and as as teams have done look you see I, I don't have a reins on the on the purse strings here I am I'm told how much we have and given decent amount of autonomy in terms of who, who we recruit. That's that side of it, but it's it's absolutely tragic, isn't it? When potentially 70 or 80 people are out of jobs through no fault of their own endeavor, just because the game's not in a good place, COVID's hit, and potentially they've been mismanaged. I, mean, I don't know in both cases, but you know both clubs have run up high amounts of debts, which seeing that they're unable to to pay off and I'm sure it was for the most part <laughs> through good intentions it doesn't detract from the fact that you lose two um, huge brands huge premiership brands aren't you uh, of the game potentially over 150 jobs in each department and that's Playing staff and backroom staff, then and, and then three hundred people, four hundred people, on the ripple effect in terms of families' lives being affected. It's tragic. It's really, really sad. I hope, I hope that we can now use this as a as a means to 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 change the game for the better. Whether that's don't, I don't know, I, I'll leave that to the, the smart people, but there's, there's contracts going to be written after the World Cup. There's PGA meetings going on at the moment. 
it, now is the opportune time to to make it more feasible so the clubs don't go under. Okay, you, you need a couple of players who left Sale and joined Worcester during the summer. I mean, for them, for them to be where they are now, it's in an awful situation. Would you would you be in touch with guys like that, or did you just to see how they are, see how they're coping? With? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, the lads are bringing them up and stuff. Curtis came, Curtis Langdon came round to one of our games, the, the Prem Cup game, the other week. So they still, they still come back and we see them round, Hale and Altrincham. So they're very much still part of the, the, the Sale family. That's good, Alex. Thank you very much for your time again. Good best luck for it. Cheers, Liam. Hi, Alex. Hi, Paul. You all right? Yeah, good. You? I, I am. I'm good. If I'm not well at this point in time, it's going to take quite a lot to get me in a, in a positive mood. Well, exactly, enjoy it. Okay. You mentioned the, the Storm High Performance Directory with you today. You went to Australia in the summer. Well, how, how did that trip go and what sort of ideas did you come back with? So I, I didn't personally go. Um, I, I, sent, I sent four lads in my stead. Oh, yeah. our, our, our youngest and, um, I guess, Four, youngest four coaches with the with the most potential uh, to learn it, it from some of the the, the best environments uh, in the southern hemisphere that I, that I've experienced in the past, and you know I've, I've been harping on about what the Storm do, what Richmond do, you know what the AFL clubs do for for, for a year and a half, and ultimately it becomes a case of the world according to Alex Anderson, and it truly isn't. So for them to go and experience what I experienced as a bit of a pilgrimage four or five times through, first hand, they came back empowered. Um, they came back with with many little things. Each of these areas and a sense, and again, like an autonomy that I just said, right, get on with it. Don't ask me. Like I'm not the queen here, or the king as it is now, to sign off on this. Like you. You implement it. If you think it's right, you think it's good for the environment, it fits with our ethos, our ethos, our culture, our mentality, implement these things and, and they did from, from week one of the, the pre-season. So it's um it was really rewarding that they went away and it wasn't just a waste of money. They worked really hard for two weeks and brought back some gold. And uh, you sort of big believer in sort of you know, using other sports to, to, to pick about this because you know rugby's rugby football's football cricket is cricket but you have a lot of lot of common common areas as well I, I think it's probably the best way unless you're going to go and find some kind of technical knowledge or nows from teams who, who are leading in, in the forefront of that if you're going to go and look for a tra coaching methodology or aspects of, 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 of to improve your culture within your own sport you're only ever going to be as good as the team that you're emulating or copying from and you know that's then that old thing of innovators early adopters followers and laggards you're not even an early adopter in that sense are you you're a follower you're way down the line you're behind the curve so in going to other sports who, who, who traditionally have done it better, who've got more resources, who've done it differently, I think you're able to get an edge. So certainly in terms of methodology, like I say, and, and uh, maintenance, divination, and, and the building of cultures.